space flight in the 21st century is all about cooperation. But it didn't begin that way. 60 years ago, at the dawn of the space age, the world was strung taut between two deadlocked superpowers, the United States and the Soviet Union. Both countries had massive nuclear arsenals capable of destroying whole cities. Military strategists called it mutually assured destruction. But for most Americans, the Soviets and their fearsome warheads seemed a world away. And then, on October 4th, 1957, Russia turned the world upside down. The Soviet Union is launching the first Earth satellite. All over the world, people are tuning into the bleep, bleep of the Red Moon, 600 miles above the Earth. Sputnik. It unleashed a national panic. Hey, Jay, how you doing? Hi, Don. Welcome to NASA. Thank you very much. So you have... Jay Galantine is an historian and author on the formative years of space exploration. Yeah. So tell me why Sputnik caused so much concern because it was flying directly over us. Mm. And the Russians didn't ask if they could do that. Our prime adversary is flying right over our, our country. They shot off a rocket that put a satellite into space. What is to stop them from attaching a nuclear warhead to that? President Eisenhower had a big problem. He needed to confront this new Soviet threat without triggering World War III. President Eisenhower was getting swarmed by the different branches of the military mm -hmm. with proposals for different options. Yeah. And I think Ike saw a real danger in making this a military venture. And but he had to do something. The, the United States was not about to sit back and let Russia lock away the cosmos behind the Iron Curtain. And so ultimately he decided wisely, I think, to create a civilian space agency, you know, whose charter explicitly stated peaceful space exploration for the benefit of all mankind. That civilian agency was NASA, the National Aeronautics and Space Administration. And its unwritten mission was clear, make the United States the leader in space. It would take something much bolder than a satellite. So it's 1959. NASA's a brand new organization. What's their plan? Their plan is something called Project Mercury. So they're going to take one person, put them inside a solo space capsule, mm -hmm. send them off into space, and get them back safely. So how are they going to do that? Do they have spaceships? Not exactly. They've got ballistic missiles. <laughs> so they're going to put a man on top of a nuke. They're going to take the nuke off and put the man on in its place. They're going to swap payloads. This sounds like a desperate plan. So right here, we have the two rockets from NASA's earliest days. And both of them started life as ballistic missiles. And this is a Mercury capsule. It's a mock-up, but yeah, this is what contained the man and everything to keep him alive for the whole trip. So the only thing I'm looking at at that rocket that is designed for space is the capsule, this on top. That's right. Everything else just gets you there, and then it falls into the ocean. Project Mercury would be a two-step process. The ultimate goal was to place a human into orbit. The space capsule would fly around the Earth several times, then splash down in the ocean. But first, NASA would test the technology with a series of less risky, shorter, suborbital flights. You go up far enough to kiss space, then you splash down in the ocean. This is the simplest form of space flight. Yes, but there was nothing simple about it in 1959. Sure thing. 